now uh, <coughs> uh, coming to the guest lecture part um first of all i would uh, like to thank the dean spgs uh, for giving this opportunity to all uh, from uh, every examiner uh, coming for uh, as an external examiner uh, to uh, share their knowledge um, to all the audience so um, thank you sir um, so sir has given uh, topic uh, he will be speak, speaking about crop genetic resources for improved traits and mitigating climate change a hope for tomorrow um, <coughs> so all along for almost 10 years uh, he has uh, worked in uh, distant or uh, wide hybridization in crops like tomato uh, this uh, for lycopene content and uh, uh, resistance to tomato leaf curl virus and also shelf life of tomato he has worked in desi cotton for fiber quality and in mustard for aphid resistance in custard apple for aroma and shelf life and in cucumber for higher yield and leaf miner resistance and in cowpea for ymv resistance so he is having uh, wide knowledge in different crops uh, for utilizing um, uh, wild species and uh, many improved lines he has developed and uh, during discussion he said uh, some are, are going to be released so i invite you sir to uh, give the guest lecture thank you thank you ma'am for the introduction <coughs> very respected chairman of this committee dr saraswati ma'am and the various faculties here heads of the department my student friends i wish you all a very warm good morning first of all let me thank the major guide of the student and the director of dean or director pgs program here and the authorities who have invited me here as a external examiner as well as to deliver a talk here or to share my views on this particular topic i express my gratitude and i am very much thankful for the same friends i'll be talking about crop genetic resources for improved traits i won't be going much into the theoretical details rather i'll be focusing more on the work which we have done and what is the status right now from where we initiated what are the hurdles problems which we faced uh so friends 12 years back we initiated a program that is a distant hybridization program we establish a center that is the center for distant hybridization field and food crops at anand agricultural university anand taking about seven different mandate crops i think it is audible yes. it is audible i think i don't remember this okay 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 so friends that way we initiated our distant hybridization program and uh, we took near about 10 mandate crops of gujarat which included okra cotton tomato cucumber custard apple in fruit crops then vegetable cowpea mustard so these were the crops which we took for the distant hybridization program and before initiating the research in this particular field we tried to look out the emerging problems or the problems which were very prominent throughout the gujarat according to that 
many senior breeders even the retired plant breeders we sat with them we formulated the research programs right and after formulating the research programs we initiated with the procurement of the germplasm right so for that we procured the germplasm from tgrc california for tomato evrdc taiwan then ihr bangalore then iivr varanasi and these are some of the institution the same way for cotton we tried to we collected from cicr nagpur then akola parbani rahuri right from hisar so we collected the germplasm so that way we collected the germplasm we screened the same germplasm at our own place for 3 4 years depending upon the condition and from that we selected the parents we started hybridization and then right now in most of these crops where we had initiated our breeding program in most of these crops we could get we 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 are in the our good line they are in the pipeline in two crops okra and cucumber we have released a variety also that i'll be showing here friend now let us talk about the crop violatives here i have to talk about the crop violatives so as such these are the wild relatives of the cultivated one and they are considered to be a very vast reservoir we look at this particular scenario that what is the need to go for this crop violatives so there is a genetic plateau in most of the crops whether these are the cereal crops or these are the vegetable crops or what we can say these are the pulses there is a genetic plateau looking at a condition of the population presently the population of the population of what we can say the global population it is near about 9.7 billion the population of india it is presently it is about 140 crores or 1.4 billion which constitutes dr maheshwaran sir my sincere regards to you sir i'm saying him after a very long time when i was pursuing my phd so i used to consult him for the mapping population how to proceed f2 derived f3 so i'm like uh, fortunate enough to see him here it is long back in 2002 2003 one right so at that time i used to talk to him then uh, once again i came here then he was a director of research also here and he was sir my regards and namaskar to you uh, so friends if we look at the global population presently it is 9.7 billion out of this population uh, it is sorry it is 7. it is 7.6 billion and it is going to be it is predicted to be 8.7 billion 2030 again it is going to be about 9.7 to 10 billion 2050 friends out of this population india contributes near about 17% of the population that is near about 140 crores 1.4 billion if you look at the population of the asia even only china and india collectively they contribute towards 40% of the population of the globe if you look at the asia the asia it contributes near about 60% of the total population of the globe so this is the scenario how to what an extent the asia one of the continent it is saturated as far as the number of the human beings or number of the what we can say population is concerned friends if we look at the cultivated part of the globe it is near about 13.4 billion and out of this 13.4 billion 1.5 billion hectare it is under the cultivation it is agriculture level and out of this 1.4 billion hectare 1.5 billion hectare this area constitutes near about 11% of the total area and 
this area is getting decreased very frequently about 3 million hectare area it gets reduced it gets lost annually due to soil erosion or other type of the pollution or so called modernization friends in such a condition where the natural resources they are getting diminished the water resources they are getting diminished the population growth it is increasing at the rate of 1.5% whereas the productivity it is at a rate of 1% we are required to break the genetic plateau we are required to increase the productivity and there has to be there there required to be an integrated approach whether it is the conventional power plant breeding supplemented with marker assisted breeding or it is a genome editing or it is something the rapid generation advancement where we can go for the speed breeding but shortening the cycle of a crop that is seed to seed cycle by how we can increase the genetic gain in a very short stipulated time all these approaches they are right to, to be they are like to, to be what we can say employed so as such this condition it becomes more alarming when there is a lot of negative impact due to the climate changes due to the erratic rainfalls due to due to what we can say increase in the temperature all over the globe you'll find such changes many new strains of the viruses new strains of the pathogens they are emerging up and for that we must develop the genotypes we must develop the varieties according to the change condition so for that the crop wild relatives which are considered to be a very vast reservoir for such important traits for such important genes they are considered as a very important source so this this is an outline i'll be talking about major global challenges and nutritional food security impact of climate change crop wild relatives second generation traits distant hybridization main features of wild hybridization problems associated with and what program we have initiated these are the things that we are talking about this is something related to the condition or this is something related to the malnutrition in fact friends one third of the population global population which is suffering from the malnutrition it is it it resides in india only as far as the global humber index is concerned we are 120 which is considered to be very very low but this global humber index data it is generated by one of the ngo in poland so i don't think that uh, there is a much hunger present in our country but guess as far as the malnutrition is concerned certainly there is a problem of malnutrition for that the food fortification the proper accessibility for the meals that is a nutritive meal quality rich food that is there so this this in fact fact sheet i was talking about which i just briefed about 9.7 billion people are they are going to be by 2050 then i talked about the requirement of the food grain about we will be requiring 3 billion ton by 2050 from our presently production of near about 291 million tons and agricultural land as i told you that 11% that is 1.5 billion hectare it is the land which is which is in fact the agricultural land out of the total 13.4 billion hectare and 3 million it gets lost it gets uh, what we can say eradicated this is the impact of the climate change as far as the environmental outcomes are concerned rising seas increasing floods increased salinization erratic rainfalls increased storm intensities increase co2 increase temperature most of the people they know that how the things they are happening and what are the basic uh, uh, what we can say reasons behind that so the impacts on agriculture that will be including increased disease severity lower yields and lower nutritive quality also 
this is in terms of the diseases what diseases they are likely to occur in case of uh, human, human beings also right so there are predicted that uh, two near about 2 lakh 50000 deaths they may occur from the diseases by malaria malnutrition diarrhea or heat stress about 7 million deaths they are they are predicted that uh, from the air pollution so as a whole the climate change apart from the agriculture it is also going to have a adverse impact on the human beings this is about the first generation traits and the second generation traits a time was there during the what we can say 90s or during the 80s a number of the traits they were defined to be targeted which included insect pest resistant herbicide tolerance virus resistance disease tolerance cms male sterility but presently as far as the newly defined are what we can say the traits which are which are considered to be targeted it includes the yield enhancement nutritional quality enhancement biofortification zinc enhancement iron enrichment nitrogen use efficiency of course it is one of the area which is which is which is required which is advised to be targeted where how we can develop the genotypes which can assimilate more nitrogen then water use efficiency with very less drops of water more yield more productivity that is also one of the very major aim climate resilient genotypes as per the newly emerged strains of the pathogen insect pest as well as the other conditions drought salinity we required to develop reorient we required to re re reorient our breeding programs so all these things parameters they in fact they will be requiring the utility or the utilization of the crop genetic resources because there are many genes there are many such traits which are which can be targeted these the already we know this what are the crop violatives how they can important resistant to biotic stresses such as pest and diseases tolerance to abiotic stresses such as salt salt drought temperature and sensitivity traits for quality improvement and uh, the unique genes for synthesis of the new crops they can be targeted friends this is how the different states they are they have a vast treasure of this biodiversity as far as the phytogeographic geographical region is concerned so we can see here that uh, the western peninsular region especially the western ghats are the eastern ghats they are having a very huge variability right so biodiversity now while going for the utilization of the what we can say crop varieties or distant relatives generally we come across with the problems like pre and post zygotic barriers failure of the zygote formation disharmony between the parental genomes cytogenetic incompatibility endosperm right so there 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 won't be the proper development of the endosperm which uh, provides nutrition to the embryo or there may be some sort of incompatibility between the endosperm and the embryo as a result the abortion the seed it may get abort abort so that is also one of the what we can say problem be associated with this and the below given here they are the traits they are the traits they are the in fact uh, ways techniques how we can get rid of such problems or how we can make our wide hybridization possible in vitro pollination fertilization embryo rescue somatic hybridization cybridization so rapid development of 100% homozygous lines induction of triploidy Induct, induction of polyploidy to overcome sterility in intersexual hybrids so these are the ways uh, these are the crops this is a program which we had initiated and which actually i wanted to focus here okra okra we wanted to breed we started our breeding program for ybm resistance in okra in case of desi cotton uh, in fact it is a gossypium herbaceum not arboreum here it is it is a herbaceum so fiber quality especially the stable length that we wanted to that uh, this is a trait we wanted to breed for then yield related productivity then tomato we our aim was to breed for higher shelf life and tomato leaf curl virus tomato leaf curl virus it is one of the dreaded problem 
in gujarat or in whole india also right even when it is in its uh, what we can say at a very massive scale it may it may be devastating to that an extent that it may the yield may be lost up to 90% also then shelf life and life life cope in content in case of watermelon resistance for the biotic and abiotic stresses especially for the water deficient conditions we wanted to breed some genotypes cucumber resistance for bi biotic stress especially for the nematode resistance it's a major problem in gujarat and at the same time we wanted to have resistant genotype for the leaf miner it's a big problem in gujarat then mustard resistance for powdery mildew and aphid custard apple it was for food quality especially for reducing the number of the seeds in custard apple at the same time increasing the shelf life so these these are some of the species of okra which we successfully maintained in our distant hybridization form and we screened them about 13 species of the okra including Abel moscus many hot variety tetraphylus ficulinus tuberculatus moschetus subspecies tuberosus and abel moscus moschetus apart from this abel moscus kelai abel moscus grandiflorus angulosus these were also the species which we have at our farm so we collected this material from nbpgr thrissur nbpgr akola then beside this iihr bangalore then iivr and uh, near about uh, 87 different sessions including the wild session of these 13 wild species of okra they were screened rigorously for for 3 years 4 years right 4 years they were screened for ybmb and in fact when we procured the material from different places they we were having near about uh, 37 different genotypes or sessions which they have reported as resistant for the ybmb but when we screened them in our local condition which is a hot spot for the ybmb we could find we found that only two sessions of the same species that is abel moscus moschetus subspecies tuberosus they were found resistant for the ybmb and all other species all other genotypes they were found susceptible right so with this particular background we initiated our breeding program so this one here if you look at this one this one here it is a this is a species two session of this species abel moscus moschetus subspecies tuberosus they were found resistant but the problem with this species is that it is as such it belongs to the tertiary gene pool of the okra and it is not crossable with the cultivated one then we initiated our embryo rescue program in that and uh, uh, we could get success in the uh, in this by uh, making many permutation combinations by making different combination ultimately we could get success in this right so the process of embryo rescue that we patented also because uh, the time duration and uh, what should, what will be the composition on the basis of that we could do this now in fact the problem with this was although we could get a synthetic hybrid but as such it was a sterile one it was a sterile one and in fact this is a problem which we generally face whenever we go for the wild hybridization or distant hybridization the f1 may be sterile some of the time we may get sterility in the f2 right it may not be in the f1 we may get in the f2 so these are the problem which are generally faced so to get rid of this we wanted to go for either the bridge crossing bridge crossing or we also try to make a back cross with a cultivated one with a culti taking the cultivated uh, variety as a what we can say recurrent parent and then we wanted to have a embryo rescue again once what happens generally if we make a one successful back cross with a recipient parent that is a cultivated one the effect of sterility it goes very it 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 becomes very much diluted and in bc1 f2 at least if we get some of the segregants right from that we can proceed for the selection and uh, then uh, selfing so that way we proceeded with that 
these are the details of the abel mosk species which were used in study with their accession collection number biological status so these are the different uh, these are the varieties cultivated varieties abel mosk esculentus geo5 geo2 pusa savani parbani kranti in fact parbani kranti and arcanamica they were they were developed as uh, what we can say uh, as a varieties for bbmb resistance but now these are used as susceptible checks at our place especially parbani kranti it is used as a susceptible check because uh, any of the variety for virus resistance generally it does not have a more age than 5 years new 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 strains of the viruses they emerge and as a result uh, the resistance it gets lower down and ultimately it becomes susceptible so for that it is a very big challenge for those particular breeders who are especially breeding for the virus resistance because uh, uh, generally these we have to always try to find out the new sources for the genes new sources for the resistance so these are their chromosomal number status as well as the crossability so in fact here we did the three tire system for the screening we screened them at the field level at a, in a, in a hot spot like condition then we screened them in a net house condition we planted the resistant plants which we have found in the field and out of those uh, resistant plants which we have found at the field we took the resistant one we planted them we grow grew them uh, under a net house condition and there we supplemented those plants we supplied a very sufficient inoculum pressure by 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 putting the plants which were full of the white flies so that they may get a very strong selection pressure so this is our second way the thirdly we also tried we also did the grafting of these resistant plants from a what we can say susceptible root stock so whatever the genotypes which were found resistant after this we again screened them with a primer which were based on the virus coat protein we screened them with a virus coat protein based primers and fact here we could find only two accessions this is a 70 and 71 number these were the two accession of abel moscus this abel moscus moschetus subspecies tuberosus this one subspecies tuberosus which were found resistant for the this ybmb because here this amplification it is showing that there was a presence of the virus genome in all the other uh, what we can say species or genotypes except the two accessions of the species that is abel moscus moschetus subspecies tuberosus so then we this is the what we can say incidence this is a field screening result of the field screening this is a net house screening and here we can see under the viral genome screening uh, by the by the what we can say uh, virus uh, coat protein method we could find only here the two accession of this species which were found resistant or free from such virus then this is the media composition which was used for the embryo rescue technique different medias they were used uh, for what we can say for the shooting of the hybrid ovules and subculture of the shoots multiplication and these are this this was the cross combination pusa savani it was crossed with this session as is and at the same time geo5 it is geo5 it is one of the released very popular variety of okra in gujarat that was also taken as one of the parent to be crossed with this session and in fact this is these are the number of the ovules which were germinated and the ovules this was the percentage of the ovule germinated so this is the isolated uh, embryo from the ovule right so this 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 shape uh, and here this is a difference of ovule and embryo of wild species of most uh, abel moscus subspecies tuberosus and this is uh, here this is the comparison of cultivated wild and hybrid ovules this is a cultivated wild and hybrid ovules friends this is the standardization of the embryo rescue technique after very many subcultures uh, uh, standardizing the protocol for shoot culture shooting for rooting we could uh, develop some of the plants here so this is a this this was one of the parent and this was the another wild species of the okra and this was a hybrid right this is a hybrid from the color also it was a pink uh, flowered plant and uh, here in fact uh, the height of this plant when we could see there were two plants which could generate generated after making about uh, uh, 10000 of the crosses 10000 of the crosses until ultimately we could get only two plants 
and these two plants the height of this plant it went up to 14 to 15 feet right this is here this is 12 feet is written but after that also it it, it was the height was increased right so in fact friends the height of the one parent it is 3 feet only when we will look at the evel mosca subspecies tuberosus it is a 3 feet it, it, it is a bushy type of the plant it never goes beyond that and the height of the another plant <coughs> that is a cultivated one pusa sonia geo5 it goes maximum to 5 to 6 feet in a, in a in a very well irrigated condition it may go up to 6 feet right in a kharif uh, purely kharif season so that way none of the parent was that much tall and the hybrid it went up to what we can say 13 to 15 feet so we also came uh, to to a conclusion we that uh, there may be this type of the complementary gene action where uh, in a particular genotype uh, the, the genes in a isolation they may not be expressing and when they came into the same genome they, they there may there might have been a complementary gene action which might have triggered the height of plant to such an extent so <clears throat> this is uh, the crossing block in in, in okra and uh, this is our at that time the then director of research dr k b kathiria presently he is a vice chancellor of our university dr k b kathiria he is also a plant breeder so uh, this way uh, this is a document for the patent then uh, this is uh, just a few photograph of the field visit now friends as such i told you that this f1 was sterile so we wanted to go for the bridge species right for that we could identify one species that is a abel moscus moschatus which is crossable to both the species that is a abel moschatus and abel moschatus abel moscus moschatus and uh, abel moscus esculentus right so we try to make a cross between a abel moscus moschatus and abel moscus moschatus subspecies tuberosus this is a abel moscus moschatus subspecies tuberosus and this is a moschatus and as a result we could get we could we could get this plant after making here about uh, more than 3000 crosses we could get uh, this particular f1 and this f1 as such uh, uh, what we can say uh, uh, very surprisingly that this f1 is completely this f1 is completely it it uh, it responds to the vegetative propagation whereas none of the parents here whether the this one and this one none of them they respond to the vegetative propagation but this responds to vegetative propagation more than 95% looking at the type of the flower and looking at the canopy of the flower and its complete vegetative propagation and the best part of this that uh, it bears the profuse flowering throughout the year so we 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 constituted uh, we formulated a program to release this particular genotype as a ornamental variety of okra and uh, uh, this type of the plant it is there so it is again a field visit this is again a uh, just view of that plant so this this is this this type of the plant it it can be grown in the form of a hedge as well as a, for the pot culture also and last year we released this variety as a ornamental variety of okra and uh, there is a very uh, there is a very huge uh, what we can say demand at the part of the uh, people to go this as a ornamental flower so this is the what we can say nomenclature gujarat ornamental okra hybrid one this is in a vase here so it has been released as a ornamental variety and uh, the second program it is about the interspecific hybridization tomato here also we started our program with 12 different species of tomato which were procured from tgrc california ibrdc taiwan ihr bangalore then uh, iivr so from different places we could procure the material including the solenum uh, uh, lycopersicum variety cresiformi solenum uh, hebrochet solenum arcanum solenum pimpinelli folium solenum perivenum solenum what we can say penelai solenum kailan solenum camilavenskai these were the different species which were we were maintaining and which we screened for for the tlcv right so uh, it lot of diversity was there in fact they were very beautiful what we can say genotypes and the variability was so good to even see also this is uh, one of the species that is a solenum lycopersicum variety crassi for me so these are basically the conetus the uh, cherry type the small size fruit type with a 
indeterminate growth so this uh, type this type species we could find found that uh, it is a resistant for tlcv at the same time it is having a very good quantity very the quantity of the content uh, lycopene content that was very much higher so uh, this way we did the crossing right and uh, presently we could develop some of the genotypes by making use of uh, such wild integrations by by making the uh, back crosses and we have reached up to this and now it in fact it is in the final stage of their release they are in the multi locational trial and they are doing uh, they are in the pipeline and they are likely to be released so these tomatoes with a very acceptable size very heavy bearing of the plant and in fact the lycopene content it has got increased 3 to 4 folds than the normal cultivated type and as such the lycopene content it is considered to be one of the very very uh, important antioxidant as far as uh, curing or as far as effect on the human health is concerned it has been reported to cure uh, a, a number of the leukemias like uh, chronic malignant leukemia acute malignant leukemia it has been reported to cure a problem like cystic fibrosis dungeon muscle dystrophy alzheimer parkinson also because it 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 it, uh, it has been reported to what we can say lower down the degeneration of the neurons lower down the degeneration of the neurons so thereby it checks the problems which are which are related to the nervous system and at the same time as i told you that as a antioxidant uh, it has a anti cancerous property also so that way uh, it is about that so here this also some of the other uh, lines which we 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 have dealt here by making use of some of the improved advanced line by making use of the wild integrations and these are some of the hybrids we have identified so hybrids in tomatoes so you can hear you can see here that this type of the cluster bearing in fact friend this type of the cluster bearing this cluster bearing it is a particular trait of the cherry type indeterminate type of the tomato and uh, whenever the cluster type bearing coupled with small size of the tomato the moment the size goes bigger ultimately the accordingly the cluster bearing it disappears means both they are inversely proportional to each other they are inversely correlated so by by taking a very huge population we could get some of the recombinants where we had a cluster bearing with a in large size so those were very important recombinants for us here so because ultimately straight way directly they will be contributing towards the enhancement of the yield so you can see here the very red blushed uh, i mean very uh, good type of the tomato fruits so these are the lines which we procured from the california we screened them for the nematode resistance and uh, this arcanum and hebrochet this arcanum this solen arcanum it was found highly resistant for both type of the what we can say uh, nematode that is amylodina incognita as well as javanica whereas this hebro lycopersicum this 490 also it was found resistant for the javanica so this screening it was done in a sick plot uh, con conditions which we have maintained at our university only so these were the various species and uh, genotypes which were which were screened and uh, which were uh, now conserved which are very much uh, what we can say we have maintained them solenum penelai hebrochates then kylens then uh, this uh, 177 this it has been procured from hr bangalore right one session of this it has been uh, procured from H, uh, ihr bangalore and the same it has been procured from tgrc california also kylens arcanum these are the various species this is the material which we have procured from the what we can say abrdc taban and these are the advanced improved lines which have been integrated for a wild gene for a gene these are the integration integration lines uh, for, for, from the wild relatives the same way in uh, chili pepper and uh, soya bean bitter gourd also so uh, this uh, again this is these are the different populations so here friends uh, we some of the time when when both the parents they are adoptable they are acceptable even we need not go for uh, making many back crosses only a single back cross followed by the segregating population selection that can be sufficient uh, the single back cross it can be used to regain the size 
to regain the size of the cultivated one and uh, after that uh, we can go for the segregation followed by the selection that can be utilized whereas if in a case if the donor parent is not that much acceptable in that particular case we may require to go for three back cross generation four back cross generation also so this is the way how we uh, proceed so these are also some of the other combinations by making use of the wild hybridization so in fact this particular la440 it, it is a introgress line for five different gene for tomato leaf curl virus resistance that is a tlcv1 2345235 so this is this la440 and it is it is one of the very good combiner as far as the tlcv is concerned and overall productivity is concerned so these these are the advanced improved lines they, they, are, they are also in pipeline they are the type of the cherry tomato and uh, in fact uh, uh, very near about 3 to 4 times more lycopene content and at the same time very very tasty right they are they are, they are i mean they are very sugary with a very good taste also in uh, a, a single person may uh, may consume up to half an kg also this is so tasty right so Uh, that we also for the raw consumption it can be very much used these are again uh, the improved interspecific tomato lines for high lycopene content sweet and good taste these are also the derivatives which we have developed depending upon this yellow one in fact uh, it has been ranked first as far as what we can say it's uh, uh, taste it's uh, what we can say uh, palatability is concerned so these are the various derivatives so this is the what we can say comparison here this is a comparison uh, an attempt to make a comparison between the different different lines parental leaves one and the derivatives which we have uh, developed in the advanced improved lines in the advanced generation so uh, this is just uh, we are discussing here about the shelf life because here the shelf life of the tomato it also depends very much upon the thickness of the rind or thickness of the pericarp right and again it is the thickness of the rind or pericarp it is a one component and at the same time the amount of the pectin and uh, the amount of the enzyme that is a pectate lies because uh, the spoilage of the tomato it happens due to the hydrolysis of the pectin due to the pectate lies if we can target the pectate lies or if you can lower down the pectate lies then ultimately there will be less hydrolysis or degradation of the pectin and the shelf life of the tomato can also be enhanced so such a research problem in fact uh, work it was done by one of, one of my phd students and we could develop some of the genome crispr based uh, crispr cas9 based genome editor lines of tomato also with a higher shelf life that uh, where we took one of the release variety of tomato from gujarat one of the popular variety that is a gat5 gujarat anand tomato 5 so uh this is about uh, cotton by hybridization cotton these these are the different uh, species we which uh, about 16 species we are maintaining presently uh, including 12 wild and uh, four uh, cultivated four cultivated uh, arboreum herbaceum barbadens and uh, hirsutum beside this uh, the species like uh, uh, remendi thurberry stercinium then brasilians then uh, david sony then uh, tomentosa so captivities trifolium trilobum these are the species which we are maintaining so these are the species which we are maintaining so these are the cross combination which have been taken uh, what we can say to to make some of the wild progressions and uh, this gcot 20 into lf 27 this is a hirsutum into herbaceum this is a barbadens into herbaceum this is a herbaceum into hirsutum this is a herbaceum into barbadens this is a herbaceum into gasipim remendi this is a hirsutum into uh, remendi so this remendi in fact this is considered to be the uh, d genome donor d genome donor as far as the evolution of the Uh, what we can say tetraploid cotton is concerned so uh, these were the number of the crosses which were attempted this is a crossing block uh, where we made the crosses and in fact as such they were not uh, crossable so we tried to make use of the embryo rescue technique but in this case uh, we devise a technique where the embryo has to be rescued at a, at a at a very immature stage right so rescuing a immature embryo it is a very difficult task and before that it was not reported 
there was not any report of risking a interspecific uh, hybrid embryo in case of cotton so these were the different uh, media compositions which were investigated which were uh, used to investigate the requirement for balanced shoot and root maturation so ultimately we could get success for the embryo germination and maturation of the plantlet uh, here you can see these are the synthetic uh, hybrids hybrid 1 2 and 3 which uh, we could get successfully out of all these cross combination and thousands of the crosses in this case we made near about 5000 more than 5 uh, 5500 cross combination they were they were attempted and as a result we could get some of the success that is through the embryo risk embryo risk so now this validation this is a validation generally we do after all the interspecific hybrids generally we validate this with the help of the molecular markers especially the what we can say the ssr markers we generally validate our hybrids so this is a validation of the hybrids through the what we can say flow cytometry right so this is what we can say uh, a histogram this is a uh, what we can say the condition of plidy in case of barbadens in case of uh, remendei and here you we can say it it is in intermediate uh, condition right so when whenever the tetraploid it is it is it is crossed with the diploid generally we get a triploid or a condition of mixotriploid also mixotriploid type of the condition is also obtained so it was validated through the flow cytometry then we went for the ultra structural analysis of leaf and pollen of interstellar hybrid through scanning electron microscope also just to validate or to see the effect at a uh what we can say minute level also so we could find out the difference between the barbadens and this is a hybrid and remendei by looking at the epidermal cell adaxial and abaxial uh conditions so here this is about some of the crop hybridization which we have initiated in case of watermelon it is a very interesting case uh, i'll just uh, sharing you with you in case of watermelon in fact we were visiting a place in gujarat which is just like a desert like place and we could find out a plant which was thriving very well and it was uh, with a very succulent type of the fruits it was there in the desert like condition in, in the month of may so we saw and uh, we we were so curious curious to see that how it is thriving here when we went to that particular place which was adjoining our what we can say road side so we could see that uh, this plant is thriving very well and uh, none other vegetation was there uh, surrounding that so curiously in the next day again we came uh, we went there with our team and we tried to see the root that uh, what makes this plant to thrive here in such a condition so we could find out that this particular plant that is one of the wide relative of the watermelon this is a citrus scolocynthes right so this uh, we wanted to see its root so we started digging the root from here these are the photograph from that particular i mean uh, when we st uh, uh, i mean uh, we were digging that so its root was so i mean lengthy because we were not able to touch the tip of that root even at the last uh, a part of the root uh, tip uh, part of that it was broken down only so uh, you can see here that uh, how much long the root is here right so uh, in fact that then from this uh, an idea came into our mind that why we cannot uh, why we should not use it for uh, bringing the trait of root into our cultivated watermelon so by taking this particular idea we started our breeding program and now we have reached up to uh, what we can say pc4 condition stage we have re reached here uh, as far as the hybridization is concerned so this way we made a uh what we can say the crossing back crossing as well as the segregating population here one problem with this is that al although we have achieved we have uh, we could gain that uh, root attribute to a very large extent but the problem with this particular species uh, that is a citrullus colocynthes is that it is very bitter in taste it is that much bitter in taste that even if you just touch this right you will find that the bitterness is coming out of your ears also right you feel a sensation like that that is something it is coming out of your body right and for the whole day you will find that bitterness in your tongue right i have never seen such a bitter thing than this earlier before to that so now in fact from the back cross bitter back crossing 
because in most of the cucurbitaceae right cucurbitaceae generally they, there is a single gene for the bitterness it is easy to remove that bitterness but here also i think uh, not a single gene but there may be more than there may be oligo it, it was a oligogenic character so now ultimately we have got rid of the what we can say bitterness but we are trying to increase the size as well as the because fruit crops these are such crops that uh, they completely depend depend upon the palatability if their taste is good only the people will touch them right so that's why taste as far as the fruit crops are concerned taste is a prime factor right for their popularity or for what we can say the uh, consumers right so here you can see here that this was the cross combination we would have taken you see here right so uh, this is a biochemical composition this is a biochemical estimation we have done and this uh, uh, paper has been uh, published also right so for that we required the biochemical composition and data just to see that uh, and we could find out that the derivatives they were having a very good uh, chemical and phytochemicals in comparison to the parents this is about the uh, our our interspecific hybridization program in custard apple so friends we started our interspecific hybridization custard apple by taking four different species one is a anona squamosa that is a sita fall then anona reticulata that is a ram fall then anona cherimoya that is a lakshman fall then anona atimoya that is a hanuman fall we made many cross combination across the different species and uh, in fact we established successfully near about 37 different interspecific hybrids in our distant hybridization form and friends some of those interspecific hybrids they are so good right uh, like uh, one of them we are like to release in the next year right it is a interspecific hybrid between anona squamosa that is one of the variety balanagar and that has been crossed with the uh, anona cherimoya right so anona cherimoya has such the shelf life of the anona cherimoya as well as the number of the seeds and aroma right so uh, that is very good and uh, the sugar content right it is more in case of uh, anona squamosa that is a uh, our sita fall so now in the hybrid the very good sort of amalgam a blend has come into the hybrid right so that that is also one of the outcome of this right so these are some of the intersepsic hybrids of squamosa with atimoya hanuman fall right so this is in fact this is the cherry moya right this is a cherry moya this is a atimoya right uh, i mean the morphological attribute to distinct or to differentiate them it is the type of the grooves right this is a type of the grooves in case of uh, custard apple right this is a custard apple that is a anona squamosa balanagar right sita fall here the grooves will be very much prominent whereas in case of atimoya it will be a very bigger fruit with this type of the flattened grooves where this cherry moya it will be a some sort of bit smaller then uh, this type of the groups right so these are the what we can say inter specific hybrids and looking at the fruit also you can say that this is a what we can say inter specific hybrid only so these are the grafted plants we have made from the uh, nursery this is again an uh, interesting story and by by making these parents we have released a variety also this year a uh, variety of what we can say cucumber so it is a cross between cucumis mellow it is a long melon in fact long melon cucumis mellow uh, ut mill gc1 it is a release variety of our uh, anand agriculture university gujarat gujarat cucumber one and it was crossed with cucumis mellow subspecies agaritis in fact this particular species is very much resistant it, it it in fact this idea came into our mind because we could see that this species it grows very well in the deserts of kutch right kutch right so kutch if, if we we uh, we thought that if a particular species it grows very well it perpetuates it reproduces in such a condition then why not to have a blood of this also into our cultivated one so we started crossing and uh, uh, followed by the back crossing also some of the derivatives they were advanced through the back crossing some they were advanced through the segregating populations also and we could get this type of the variation right these are uh, what we can say the different uh, Uh, segregants right so this is just we are doing uh, just is a field visit and uh, he was our director of research at that time dr kb kathiria just we are moving to the field this is an organoleptic test we are just uh, looking at all this these are the various scientists so 
this is an uh, interspecific hybridization between uh, what we can say brinjal here also we are making use of the wild species that is the solen torvum and sorium uh, incanum also one of the species where we have made successfully some of the interspecific hybrids these are the yard long beans in fact uh, this is a very what we can say good type of the material we have generated just 9 uh, years back i had gone to nbb jar thrissur in the field day Uh, of uh, what we can say this particular crop that is a cowpea right so we could uh, th there are many session near about uh, 100 more than 100 session i could uh, uh, select uh, near about 26 27 session out of that then uh, they just we got those from there and we made a cross between our our vegetable cowpea and our even grain type cowpea with this one and presently we could get very good type of the uh, what we can say material it is also in uh, uh, f5 f6 generation this is about the cross uh, hybridization which we initiated by making a use of uh, uh, what we can say capsicum anum grossum means shimla mirch and the mirch also right this type of the material we have right now we have uh, got so this is about the inter specific hybridization in mustard for aphid and uh, we could release uh, last year one variety of mustard from anand agriculture university through the inter specific hybridization by making use of uh, uh, gentia right uh, gentia it has been crossed with compestris and uh, the resistance for aphid it is quite resistant for aphid so he is our one of the senior plant breeder now he is retired he is a ex head of uh, department of genetics and plant breeding dr g c jadeja sir and these are our pg students phd students and msc students and uh, he is a junior scientist dr vaja so uh, these are some of the plants which we have selected this is again a field visit there are dr uh, patil the ex vice chancellor of uh, dharwad as well as the ex director of iri he visited uh, once our field of this mustard very good uh, derivatives lines they have been generated then uh, these you, you, we can see here in fact uh, this is a unsprayed this is unsprayed material where we are uh, screening for the aphid resistance we can see here that the cultivated release variety they have got completely collapsed due to the aphid due to the aphid susceptibility whereas the inter specific material they are what we can say quite resistant for the aphid so this also you can see here these are the cultivated lines and the this line gangetic type of the plants with a very huge number of the silicoa very uh bigger in size so that uh, is a here you can see the uh, variation in terms of the silica which we could obtain right this is you can see here the size number of the seeds in comparison to the cultivated gm4 gm3 gm2 this is a vegetable cowpea which we have generated from the uh, inter sub specific crosses so this is the germ plasm which we are maintaining in fact it is not uh, updated now it is more than that right in case of okra 79 plus 63 these are the wild species which we are maintaining and cultivator 29 tomato 16 wild 10 cherry type 13 tgrc 8 avrdc then cotton 12 wild 4 uh, cultivator then brinjal 3 wild and 4 cultivated then chili bottle guard bitter guard then uh, these are the germ plasm then yard long bean was what i was talking about uh, in case of cowpea right so this is again the number germ plasm which have been successfully maintained screened and utilized what we can say uh, at anand agriculture university this is the this is how we do the things whenever we frequently go for exploration trips we br bring the material and then we put for the display many breeders from the different departments they will be coming to have a selection and to give their uh, a sort of ranking right let us suppose if you go for the citrus collection with display on a table then many breeders horticulturist people they will they will be invited to give the ranking and on the basis of that uh, visual ranking or phenotypic ranking we also design our experiments or breeding experiments that uh, how we have to proceed so this is a one uh, uh, trip which we made to what we can say an area adjoining to abu road mount abu so it is a aravali hills and uh, the part of this it is a tribal area the tribal people they grow the land races 
uh, especially the area of Amir Gar, the Ibgal, Iqbal Gar, Amir Gar, Danta. It is a tribal belt, so we uh, oftenly make such exploration trips. So this is uh, my one one of my MSc student. Uh, now uh, he's in uh, job. It is uh, what we can say six seven years back. Is me myself and he's uh, my, our assistant Jignesh Parmar. In fact, I wanted to mention him here. He is one of the very, very what we can say, good worker, and uh, we could do uh, this work as a team effort. And this Jignesh Parmar, right? This person, he was instrumental uh, in doing many things all together. He is very honest to work. We don't see uh, Diwali, Raksha Bandhan, Eid, Christmas, right? So whenever we just, as far as the field is concerned. We see the plants. Uh, we prior give the priority to that. That so it is a selection from the farmer field. This green type of the bottle guard. It was a very what we can say uh, big variation for us. So we could identify this and this also we have we're maintaining. This is a bhut jhulakya from Assam lemon. This is a type of the variation which we are collecting collecting from the different places. This is a one of the species of. Uh, uh, what we can say, cucumis. This also we are maintaining. These are the cucumis wild germplasm collected from the different places of the Gujarat. This is a some of the species of Mamoldica, Mamoldica dioca. It is a one what we can say which is majorly cultivated in Gujarat. We called it as a concoda. Beside this, Mamoldica cochichiensis, Mamoldica sebunguleta, Mamoldica sahyadrika. These are also some of the species of this. And this material, in fact, I could get from. Uh, uh, one of uh, uh, the prince here, I mean, now he's a retired Dr. Joseph John, right? He was a germplasm curator as well as principal scientist in uh, NBPJ Thrissur, right, in Kerala. So, in fact, we are also very much thankful to him because uh, unconditionally he used to give us material, although MTA was there. But uh, what happens many a times, even we, we, we are we are trying to do all formalities, MTA also, we don't get the material right from the sources so that way so this is in fact the lines so this is in fact a photograph which was taken in a uh, in a, in a one uh, tribal area these are the tribal people and uh, right now also they use this uh, what we can say arrow and bow for the hunting purpose so we had gone for a germplasm collection there so it was a very nice experience so here i end this presentation and if anyone wants to ask or interact or supplement something, you are most welcome. And thanks for a patient hearing. Yes, Rami Atel, please. You are, you are talking about shedding. Uh, as such, uh, there is not uh, much problem of shedding, which we, in case of cherry type, in case of cherry type, that coronatus type, there is some, some problem of shedding is there. But as such in tomato, it's not a big problem. Because uh, why it is not a big problem? Because uh, we have to pick the fruit at a pink stage, right? So in that particular stage, it is before the ripening stage, right? Generally, the picking of the tomato, it is done taking the transportation and all that also into consideration. A stage has been optimized to pick up the fruits from where the further ripening will also take place, right? Because if it will be completely raw, then the further ripening may not take place. So a, a stage who, who do this cultivation of tomato, they know this. The tomato fruit they are picked at a stage, right? So that uh, so that they they can be used for the transportation all those days to to have a bigger shelf life, right? So as such, there is no problem of shedding and all that, right? There is not such problem because picking is done at a stage. Shedding generally happens when there will be senescence, when we, there will be sufficient abscisic acid, and that is the natural when we 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 will let the fruit to be completely ripened at the tree right so we generally don't let it in case of tomato
grafting in case of grafting i went to kerala agriculture university few years back they were doing this on a commercial uh, what we can say level also uh, they told me that they are doing uh, for some private companies they are producing 10 lakh plants for this company 2 lakhs for this and one of the private seed company also in gujarat jharvi seeds they are doing the vegetative propagation in especially in this uh, what we can say this crop uh, tomato they are making use of uh, the two type of the root stocks one is a brinjal they are taking the what we can say root stock of uh, 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 it is a uh, species viranum there are two species one is a torvum and the second one is a viram they are taking either the root stock of this or they are also taking the root stock of one of the nematode resistant genotype of the tomato right so they are making use of that because there is a very big problem of nematode in tomato right it is one of the major problem No, 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 no. In fact, the cyan part will be any of the released variety which is very good in, which is very well adopted, very pop popular, right? Because all the well adopted, very popular, good yielding varieties with a good quality, shelf life, palatability, table value, they may not be completely resistant for that. Just root stock is going to provide the resistant for the nematodes or such problems which are associated to what we can say the soil. Secondly, some of the root stock, especially when we talk about the brinjal, or some of the root stocks, they have a very good efficiency as far as the assimilation of the water, assimilation of the nutrients is concerned. Right? When we make use of that particular root stock, automatically the overall biological yield or the sink source relationship that all that will also get uh, what we can say enhanced. Right? So that way, actually, what it is, why it is done. sorry ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am you can take a one plant and you can multi, you can get up to 200 plants within a one year its growth is so profuse and uh, if let us suppose you have planted this in this season in next monsoon in next monsoon right you can it its size will be that much sufficient that at least 50 cuttings you may take cuttings not grafting ma'am it is cutting we are multiplying this through cuttings only and cuttings is very simple you just take the cutting put into the normal water normal water within 10 to 15 days it will it will root like anything there will profuse rooting nothing else we have to add yes yes ma'am in fact in fact uh, we are more interested to exploit the color in this case the natural color as far as the col natural color is concerned the natural color it is very much good in this case right so now with the many things like organic and natural products right the importance it is getting increased so that way our biochemists now they are analyzing that and they could find out that the color of this it, it can be exploited in that direction the color exploited from the leaves it can be exploited in that direction Yeah, please, ma'am. Uh, in fact, ma'am, we got. Of course, we got a segregation. We got a segregation in that. But uh, now, presently, fruits, as far as the fruits are concerned, they are not. as such comparable to the cultivated one that's why we are now trying to go for the in fact our aim in fact our aim was to use this as a bridge species as a bridge crossing right so it is just a sort of discovery for us it is a by product of our ongoing program when while crossing two species that is a abel moschus moschetus with abel moschus moschetus subspecies tuberosus 
we could get such a plant f1 synthetic hybrid which were having very beautiful flowers red color flowers with a vegetative propagation then we when we then we thought of releasing it as a ornamental variety because it was fulfilling all the criteria of a ornamental variety now that particular program now again the cultivated one the cultivated one right we are going again both way we are making we are we are making the cross between the cultivated one and this f1 right from that also we have reached up to bc1 right bc1 back cross one generation we have got right so in fact our aim was to introgress the trait of yellow vein mosaic virus resistance right so this in fact this particular variety it is a by product of that right while going through that we could find out that this hybrid okay fine this is a very good right so we just talked to our horticulture people and we just uh, make a decision that yes it has it fulfilled because it gives the profuse flowering throughout the year also right so especially for those people who do worship and who just uh, offer the flowers to they can get such a accessibility of the flowers throughout the year ma'am it bears on an average a plant will bear near about 35 to 40 flowers every morning and uh, it looks very good also the same thing it can be put in the form of a hedge also right if you'll just uh, grow them densely right after certain a growth if you can give them any particular shape it can be very it it suits that particular criteria also right we have grown that in our botanical garden of in the border we have grown that and uh, it's quite successful in that now to go for further for the y, uh, yvmb resistance that process is all, already there that is going on ma'am that we are doing to develop a variety with fruit that process back cross and uh, what we can say segregating population followed by back crossing that process is still it is going on yes of course ma'am because we have not checked it for salinity but 99% they may be certainly resistant to that because uh, it is very saline and it is very water deficient of course water deficient also ma'am of course because uh, that whole area it is having a very oh, huge salinity it is having a very huge salinity if and no ma'am not not marshy not marshy not marshy condition normal of course ma'am of course ma'am i cannot tell you exactly but that particular area of kach dwarka right that is considered to be what we can say the size they are saline only they are saline only and they are harsh only in kach there is a selected pocket where the vegetables or other crops can be grown otherwise they can, they, they cannot grown but this species it grows irrespective it grows in the deserts right you won't find other type of the vegetation there in that particular places it it grows generally that way ma'am so from student side if anyone wants to say or even supplement also anything antony this sampath they are very hard work, hard working people this sampath has done masters from our anand agriculture university only and this antony they are just uh, they took me to many fields also orchards here so if yes yes please from student side okay then we should end here okay thank the uh, once again i thank each and every one here uh, for giving me a chance to share my views about this and uh, to act here as a external viva to interact with all of you which are uh, what we can say all intellectuals are here i am very happy to see the orchard here so that way i am very much thankful to all the authorities here
right vice chancellor director dean head of the departments all the student friends thank you thank you very much thank you So good afternoon to everyone. I would like to thank our external examiner who has given a very good lecture. I was just for a part of the lecture only, sir, but I was very happy to see the segregation and the variability which you showed in the vegetable crops and all. It was more informative, and our students are also benefited by that. Thank you so much, sir, for traveling such a long distance, and thank you, students as well as others, professors. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, sir.